My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Ask Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 3,141 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Hey everyone, welcome back. I think it's been a couple of weeks since I posted a video and I received a requirement that I've received several times in the past and I thought, you know what? If I'm receiving this requirement over and over by customers, then chances are you are too. And I thought this would be a pretty good topic uh, to post on YouTube. And uh, before I get to that, just also wanted to thank everyone for responding to my LinkedIn post earlier this week. Um, I had a friend who's looking for a ServiceNow developer on a federal government contract with the Department of Defense. You have to be a U.S. citizen. You have to have an active secret clearance. Kind of hard to find you know, these types of individuals, but I thought I'd put it out there on LinkedIn. Um, I believe the position is still vacant. So if you know anyone that's a U.S. citizen, has the clearance, no service now, and especially if they know ITSM or um, I believe it's HR, um, really appreciate it. Um, that would help my friend out. And also, I get nothing out of this. I just do this um, to connect people with opportunities. You know, it's kind of a good karma thing. So for today, what we're going to do is the scenario or the customer requirement kind of looks like this. Sure, we have our automated responses, our notifications that get sent out or triggered when we open up a problem record, which is fine. So in this example, I'm going to open up a record called JM test. Um, maybe I'll even put Aspen now afterwards. I'll click save and an email is sent, uh, which is fine for most organizations, but a lot of organizations or customers that I've had in the past really want to know what is the amount of time it took for the individual, meaning the person who it was assigned to, to open up an email here and email the customer. So I'm gonna show you how we, or I've approached the solution in the past. And the ingredients into this recipe are three custom fields. Um, so I did two on the task table in my personal developments. And, and again, I've also done this in real life. So um, this solution is working in some customer instances out there in the world. Um, so yes, it, it, it does work in production. Taken the type of duration, um, or excuse me, I created a field uh, type called duration, uh, a field with a type of duration. Don't know why I can't spit that out today. Uh, column label is going to be email response duration, at least in this example. I don't know what I called it in real life, but something to that effect. Then I did a date time field it's called email response date or something of that nature. And then the third one. Um, I did it on the sys email table called task and it's just you underscore task and the reason I created this I know that there is a field out there called like target or it's also I believe um, the column name is called instance which is fine but there's no way really to dot walk um, to the task from there the instance basically will bring in any record um, sys ID that's there not necessarily just the tasks so I created that then I created a relationship. And for those of you who are not familiar with relationships, um, I'll go over how I created this one. I called it outbound emails. And we can see it's between the, it's querying from the, so basically we're saying, hey, go out to the sys email table and then apply it to the task table. And also this is gonna pull down to incident, problem or whatever, task tables, um, excuse me, tables that extend task. So that's why I created those original fields on the task table because I don't have to create these fields all you know, o over and over again. That's why I created on task. Um, I don't like creating fields on the task table because I've run into situations where you actually run out of space, believe it or not, because everyone wants to pile onto the task table. Um, which, you know, I've only experienced that once and I haven't since, so maybe that problem's been mitigated. But I guess um, the point here is that, you know, it's a nice rinse and repeat solution that you can use over and over again. 
So that's why I wanted it on task. So I don't have to keep rebuilding those fields. I named it outbound emails. You can name it whatever you want. And then let's take a look at this really simple query that we have here, current. And current refers to the table that we're querying from or sysemail dot add query. Now remember the field I created, u underscore task on the sysemail table. Boom, there you go. And then we're gonna say comma parent dot sys ID. And you're probably like, whoa, dude, what does that mean? Like, I'm a visual person, so can you show me how that actually looks in real life? Sure, dude, no problem. So let's go back to our problem right here. And what we're saying is, this is our parent. Remember, we're querying from the sys email table. We're creating this relationship, and we're applying it to the task table and a table like problem that extends task. So if we scroll down, We'll see here, I added a related list called outbound emails. So basically what's gonna happen is, anytime an email is uh, created, it is going to uh, put that email in this list down here. So if I go ahead and refresh, we're gonna see down here, hopefully this list loads in a relatively uh, short amount of time. In fact, I'm gonna scroll up because maybe I went too fast for the system. But sometimes that's the way it is with, uh, I guess, personal instances, or maybe there's a lot of stuff going on in my instance on a Saturday. But basically what we want to do here is take a look in the list and just make sure that it's bringing in all the ones that are related to this number here. And we'll scroll down. And it looks like we have um, two. And one is my problem has been open, so that's a standard one. And then we have one that's send ignored. And generally that happens when you open up the email client and you're getting ready to send something. And then it, you know, just kind of, you say, oh, you know what, I don't feel like sending it. So then another email will probably appear here in a couple minutes, but we only want the ones that have been sent. And we also want the ones that aren't system, right? So pay attention to that right there. So, because I'm gonna show you the business rules um, that we have to create. So there's about three business rules. So again, uTask coming from sys email table and then parent.sysid um, is basically what we're getting off this task. So meaning parent record dot sysid, the sysid from the parent, it's gotta match that task. All right, now that I've drilled that home three times and you're sick of me talking about that, let's get to the business rules. So the first one that I have here is set task. What do, I, what do I have this business rule here for? Basically, I'm running this, and you can see here, I don't have any conditions on it. In real life, you'll probably wanna have some conditions on it so that way it doesn't um, always fire, but that's up to you. Um, again, this is something probably for um, developers who are, are pretty advanced and have worked with a tool for a while. And uh, you should probably consult them too. That would be a great idea. Consult them too and make sure that this is the, the solution you want to implement. So what do we have here? Current. Remember, current's coming from, in this case, sysemail, utask equals. And this is the field I was talking about, this instance field. Um, if we take a look at it in condition builder right here, it's not called instance for whatever. I have no idea why they named it target. But if I type an instance, it's not there. It's called target. And if I put in target here, we'll see here, there is no operator like a reference field would be. Like if I look at task, see here, this, this gives us a clue right here that it's a reference field. Also, the operators here are way different. So we have our advanced condition put in. We're good to go. What are we running at? Running it before order of 100. Then we're gonna to go to our next business rule, which is response time. Again, this is running on the sys email table. So this is going on update. And we're basically saying task.email response state is empty, right? So we wanna make sure that we're not running this every time because there could be several times that the, the individual has to email the customer um, regarding this task. So then we're gonna say created by is not system. I think I mentioned that before. And then type is sent. So we don't want any of that sent ignored stuff uh, or having this business rule run on the sent ignored, right? Or some of the other boxes that we have here. So then we're gonna to go to our advanced. What are we doing? We're doing a glide record query, right? So sys email, there's a one to many relationship between task and sys email. So we have to do our glide record query. 
and then we're saying okay go ahead and get the u task and then we're setting the value right here response state with current currents coming from where syseml the created right the created dates or created on so remember that you email response they were saying okay shoot that puppy up there right for the response time and then we have another one right here that's running on our task table to say hey go ahead and calculate this thing and now we're saying when the response date changes and it's not empty right so on update that's when we want to go ahead and run this thing so let's go over to our advanced and what are we saying here so this is a duration calculation so we're saying, okay, our duration, so current coming off the task table, dot, meaning field name, you email response duration, get the difference of sys created on, and again, this is current, so it's coming from here, the created here, and then the email response date. Uh, and of course, we're getting the display value because this is, this is generally the way, you know, the duration calculation will be set up, right? So we're saying get the difference between these two. So let's go see this puppy in action. So far, we don't have anything here sent. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and send one. And we're probably gonna have two emails populated. I'm thinking one's gonna be send ignored, and then we're gonna have this one also. So I'm gonna go ahead and find myself. And then I'm just gonna put in here Aspen now. And I'm gonna hit send. Now, it might take a couple of seconds for this business rule to run. But one way we're going to know it runs is that there are going to be these little blue icons that appear right next to it. All right, so we'll just wait for a second there for this to, um, to occur. And there we go. Email response duration. Look at that. Nine minutes, 18 seconds, it looks like. And then here's our email response date. Also, if we want to make sure that this didn't run a second time, we could send another email afterwards, which I don't want to drag this email, or excuse me, this <laughs> email. Uh, I don't want to drag this video out too long. Um, so you can test the solution yourself um, in your own PDI and maybe apply it to a customer instance later. But um, you know, I found that this has worked um, great in the past. Also, one other thing I'll add is that you know, once you implement this solution, you should probably do it at the beginning of rolling out an application. Now, if you're in the middle of it and people want to know retroactively um, what the email response duration was for all the ones going back, I do have a background script um, handy. Uh, I'm not going to go over right now because it's really long and there's a lot of stuff in there. But if you need a copy of it, just go ahead and contact me. So that's our solution for today. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.